Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Hayden Adams with A Designer of Codes. I want to walk you through a website I built, and I utilized the plugin Gatsby Plugin Preload Fonts to load up a font I brought in. Here it is right here. It's kind of a fun-looking kind of tropical tiki font, and I used that through Adobe Fonts. In previous videos, I talked about using a plugin that preloaded Google Fonts, but as I also said in that video, I use a lot of Adobe Fonts, and so I was looking for a way to preload fonts from Adobe and I found that in this plugin. And I'll walk you through how I utilized it right now. All right, what's going on, ADWC Nation? Hope you're having a fantastic day out there. So why bother preloading fonts? Well, there's this split second time between when the site loads and when your fonts come up. And so what that does is it can create a little bit of a design hindrance for a split second. You might have seen in other videos I've done before is I haven't utilized this plugin in previous videos because there wasn't a way to plug in, or so I thought, with Adobe fonts. So to find this plugin, we're gonna head over to Gatsby Plugin Preload Fonts, which you can Google search, or it's gatsbyjs.org slash packages slash Gatsby dash plugin dash preload dash fonts. So to install that, if you've watched videos of mine before, you know I am a Yarn fan. You can either type in and copy npm install save Gatsby, or what I did is I said yarn add Gatsby plugin preload fonts. Now mine's already installed, I'm not gonna run it again because it's gonna take a few minutes to run, but that's the first step in what you have to do in order for it to run, you have to install it. Again, I use Yarn, you can use NPM, either way works fine, even if it doesn't show Yarn on the screen. The next thing I have to do is I have to go into my package.json folder and add preload fonts, Gatsby preload fonts. You can find that, let me pull up my screen here, and I had a different screen below. And inside the package.json file, if I head over to Visual Studio Code, I am working on the site as we speak, so a lot of other files are up there. I'm looking for, if I go into the scripts area, I'm gonna copy and paste the preload fonts, Gatsby preload fonts. So in the scripts area, I put in at the very top, just because, well, I could, the preload fonts, Gatsby preload fonts. So it's gonna run the package or first, in order for this to run successfully. The third step I have to do is I have to then add in your Gatsby config file, Gatsby plugin preload fonts. So what I'm gonna do, if I head over to my Gatsby config and Visual Studio Code, I know I had it somewhere in here, was I also added the Gatsby plugin preload fonts into my site. After loading it into Gatsby config, I have to come back and read the next step. Before building your application, you will need to generate a font asset map using the included Gatsby preload font script, npm run preload fonts. Now if I do this, if I just copy and paste this, this is not going to work. If I copy paste, oh, error message. So what it says is could not establish, if we move it over here, could not establish a connection with the dev server attempted connection to HTTP colon 8000. So what I have to do is I have to start up my development server and then run the NPM run. So let's run, as it says before, make sure you've run Gatsby develop and set the following ANV variables. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say Gatsby develop in this window. This is also why I like using iterm2 for these small times when I have to have a double window pulled up in order to run it twice. So Gatsby develops is gonna start up. Come on, it's working. Ran fast a second ago, it must take a second or two longer. There we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command T on the Macintosh to create a new tab. I'm gonna go into my folder, which is under Firebase Projects, which I've just named, even though I've used Netlify and Firebase, I've just named it a global Firebase folder. And I have Kia to run a podcast. Now that I'm running the server over in this tab, when I copy and paste npm run preload fonts, what it's gonna do is, it's gonna scrape my information 
and it actually ran a second ago. I actually paused the video to do this, thinking I was making sure it was working fine. And the routes have not changed last time. If you haven't had any new routes, you don't need to do this. But let's do it anyway so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to rerun the routes, or routes. I'm not quite sure what to say. Is it routes or routes? That could be a question of the day in this video in so many ways. So what it's going to do is it's going to go through Typekit and scrape which fonts I'm using and write into the cache what to preload. So it's running through them all. I only have a few, but apparently it's thinking it's got more. Oh, I do have a couple sans serif fonts, so that is true in that case. So what I get as a result by running the npm run preload fonts is if we look down here, it's gonna basically, it's gonna run through all the link rels, tags be added, and run that each time. Now I did add the font inside of my custom CSS. There it is. I actually have two and I have fit to take off the second one. There was a glitch with Adobe's login yesterday. So for some reason, one of my type kits was not loading properly. So I ran a second one to make sure it was working. It's all resolved, we're all good, but I do have two type kits. So I eventually need to remove one and that go forward with that piece. But now what I have is a font preload cache.json. And when I deploy this site now, it's already preloaded my fonts into this JSON, so I won't have that annoying glitch of having that kind of turn from a default sans serif Helvetica into a font I really want to use. So let's go ahead and stop the server, and I'm going to close one window, Control C to stop it. I'm going to do, because I'm working with GitHub on this one, I'll say git add asterisk, git commit am added a caching of new fonts. Yep, I have one file changed. And here I will say git push origin master. And it's gonna update that JSON file that I did work on because I did republish it and I do need to do it a third time because I did add extra fonts that I do not need. I'm gonna pause the video and once it's done in Netlify, I will come back and show you the results. So while I had the video paused, I did wait for this to update. It was deployed in one minute and 10 seconds. I am recording this video in late May, and if you are using Netlify after about May 26th, May 27th, you will notice your builds look a little different. They've actually updated the way that they've ran their builds, and it's actually gone much faster. I'm excited to test things going forward and seeing how much faster they actually build in Netlify. Okay, side note, back to the website. Let's see if this actually works. I'm gonna click on the key on a podcast. And what I did have also, if you notice the background, is I have a background image pulling through GraphQL using an SVG, and the font came up with no problem. So it does work. And I just wanted to show you how it actually works properly inside of my website. Ready to continue becoming a better web designer through code? Check out more of my videos through my channel, A Designer Who Codes. Thanks so much for watching.